Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA 702, Routing and Switching Essentials, and this is Chapter 9, Section 9.2, Standard IPv4 ACLs. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure standard IPv4 ACLs to fill the traffic according to network requirements, modify the standard IPv4 access control list using sequence numbers, and configure standard ACLs to secure VTY access. Entering criteria, create an ACL definition. Here, you enter the global configuration mode, define the statement of what to filter. And then you have to go to apply an ACL to an interface. So enter interface configuration mode and identify the ACL and the direction to filter. So the first thing is, we go in the global configuration mode, we create an ACLs by defining our statements, what to permit, what to deny, and so on. After that, we have to apply it somewhere. So we have to go to the interface and apply it on the interface. And then define the direction, well, learn which direction in or out. So for example, how, to how we create an air and ACLs. So first, ACL, start with access hyphen list. And then we, we type a number. The number is a unique identifier. For example, five on this case. The range identifies the type of ACL. The next section is to define what it is permit or deny. And turn our terms to specify how to package which meets the condition will be handled. So after we type an access control list, we type a number, then we're going to say either to permit or deny what statement we want to do. Permit implies that packet will not be filtered. Denies implies the packet will be filtered. We can have a remark there as well, which has allows you to enter the description of an access control list. And then the IP address of what you permit or deny, or for example, a network address it could be. That only that's going to look at the source of the test condition is going to be the source IP address. So access list, give a number, that five defines it. Okay, well, this is standard ACL. Permit, and then we are permitting this single host. Applying an ACL to an interface, so we have to go to uh, apply it to the interface, access the interface, for example, Ethernet, interface E0, for example. Then define IP, so the protocol of that whatever interface, you, whatever needs protocol ACL you are applying. And then access group, so we access group five, the access is located to number five, and then the direction in or out, out in this case. So in or out identifies if the ACL is for incoming or outgoing traffic. In means the packet are filtered as they enter the interface before the routing decision. Out means the packet are filtered as they leave the interface or after the routing decision. Out is a default, so if you didn't enter anything, it will be default. Outbound ACLs are generally more efficient and more preferred. Inbound ACL must check every packet. Entering criteria statements, by default there is an implicit implied deny at the end of all ACLs for traffic that was not matched to a configured entry. So for example you create a lease ACL, access hyphen list 1, and we're permitting one network, 192.168.10, this network here. So if I mark it here. So what we we did 192.168.10 network. How we know that? Because we have three zeros. That means match the first three octets. The last octet, which is this zero here, is the means ignore. We can put any number there. It just means ignore. That's the same as saying access list, same access list, but in the end saying deny any. That's implicit deny. The statement is added automatically at the end of the ACL. Configuring a standard ACL. For example, we created this access list. Access list 2, we deny and host 192.168.10.10. The same access list, we're permitting that network 10 to 0. Uh, then we deny the anything that starts with 192.168. And then we're per permitting anything that starts just with 192. So the order is important. The more specific, you want to put them to the top. So you can see the host is right to the top. right? If you put this ACL, like the first ACL here at the end, it will not have an effect. Because after there's a match, it will be, okay, well, there's a match, so it's going to be permitted. But we want to deny this host. So we put this, the order will be at the top. Okay, let me just get, try and get rid of that uh, here. Okay, so now, 
uh, as the packet comes in, the router let's let's go here like this. The router will go and read it. Okay, is it is the source address one nine two one six eight ten ten? If it is, deny it. No, it's not. Okay, fine. Move to the next slide. Is it is the source network one nine two one six eight ten dot zero with a wildcard mod zero 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 two five five? Yes, it is. Okay, permit that. If it's not, then move to the next line. It says, okay, well, is the is the source address starts with 192.168? Yes, if I go back. Yes, deny that. If it's not, okay, let's let's move on to the next one. Is the source asking 192, is it for 192? Does it start with 192? Yes, it does. Okay, well, let's permit that. So for example, um, say they have an IP address 192.123.123.123. Until here, there's no match. But here, there's a match. Permit that. Okay. If it still doesn't start with the 192, then we get it denied. So anything that 172 will be denied, 10 will be denied, and so on. From this slide, what you want to know is that more specific statements, they have to be at the top, right? So if you deny a single host, for example, you want to put that in the top. Less specific statement at the end, towards the end. We will be in ACL. For example, access list 10 permit 192.168.10.0, exit, and then show an access list. We can see the access list 10 is there. If we want to remove that access list, we have to go to uh, global configuration mode and say no access list 10. That's how we delete the access list. Um, before you delete the access list, make sure that you, it's not on the on the interface. So you maybe you should remove it first from the interface if it's applied to somewhere. And then go and delete the ACL. If if you delete the ACL and it's applied on the interface, it just will not have effect anything on the interface. Comments, remarks. So an ACL ten, for example, remark, permit a host from the one nine two one six eight ten dot zero LAN, right? So that's very clearly I know what you were trying to do. If you actually do remark them, and then we create an access list ten, permit one nine two one six eight ten dot zero 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 two five five wildcard masks. So with access list 10, we permit in host all the hosts from that LAN. And then show running config, and then include access list 10, and we can see the remark there as well. Configuring a standard ACL, the full syntax of the standard ACL command is as follows. So we go in the global configuration mode, config, and type access hyphen list, and give it a number, right? So if you remember, for the standard numbers what was it do you remember 1 to 99 and then 1300 to 1999 deny permit a remark you can use any of them so you can deny or filter the traffic allow the traffic to go through or we can just put the remarks or we identify what we were trying to do and then we put the source it could be the source network and then we use the wildcard mask and we put the log to remove an ACL, the global configuration mode no access list command that is used. The remark keyword is used for documentation and makes access list a greater deal easier to understand. Cisco IOS applies an internal logic when accepting and processing standard ACL statements. As discussed previously, access list statements are per processed sequently. Therefore, the order in which statements are entered is important. So for example, if you say you want to permit a single host on that network, 192.168.10.10, you want to permit this host, but you put this statement first, access list 3, deny 192.168.10.0.000255, this host is within that network. So as soon as we read the list and we find a match, the, we, the router will act on that match. It will deny it. So it will not continue to read it. So if, if you put this on the router, the router will be kind and tell you that, oh, okay, well, no, no, this is not very good. You should be putting this above, so you should be putting this here, yeah, above here. And, but the, the exam will not tell you, or I don't know, job interview. So whole statement conflicts with the previous range statement, so this is the whole range, so 10.0. If we ignore in the anything, in it, it could be 1, 2, 3, all the way to 255, and 10 is there, right? So applying standard ACLs to an interface, after a standard ACL is configured, 
It is linked to an interface using an IP access group command in interface configuration mode. This is a command again, let's, if we look at it, IP, that's a protocol, an access group, and then you call what access list you define, one number, or it can be a name as well, and then define in or out. To remove an ACL from an interface, first enter the no IP access group command on the interface, and then enter the global no access list command to remove the entire ACL. So configure the ACL statement, so access list 1, for example, permit, we permit in the network 192.168.10 network. Then go to the interface so we, where you want to apply it, so interface serial 000, and then you choose IP access group 1 out. Creating a named standard ACL, so named is, is different, not normal ACL, just numbered ACL, we start with access list, and that's it. If we want named ACL, we have to start with IP and then access list. And the next, we need to tell is it standard or extended we are configured. So, for example, standard. And then give it a name. This is your choice, right? We said the capital letters is better, alpha numeric, one numbers, so. Then you go to access list configuration mode, yeah? So config, so you can see that it's a standard. It says there it's a standard named ACL. So access list configuration mode, and then you can put the statements, either the permit, deny, or remark, and then put the source and source wildcard mask, and then log. Same, you go to the configuration on the interface, you apply it ACL, or bind it that ACL to that interface. Commenting a numbered ACL, so for example, again, access this one, remark, do not allow guest workstation through, Access one deny host one nine two one six eight ten ten. I guess that's a guest workstation. Access is one access list one remark allow devices from all others one nine two one six eight subnets. So access is one permit one nine two one six eight zero zero, and then zero zero means match those two octets, and ignore everything else. And then we go to a serial interface and we apply it as outgoing ACL. Comment in named ACL. So first we create a named ACL IP starts now IP access list, and we tell it's a standard access list, and the name is no access. That's the access list, and we can see that we are in access list configuration mode, and say like rem remark, and then whatever you remark you use, the rest of the configuration is the same as the other one. Okay, it is in standard numbered ACL. So after you create an access list, one deny host, whatever. Access one permit, 192.168. So we deny a single host, uh, 192.168.10.99. And we permit and everything else from that network. When we do show ac access list is we see 192.168.10.99. But maybe it's not meant to be 99, it's meant to be 10. So to fix that up, we go and say, we create like a name access list, so IP access list standard, and then even though it was one there, we just say one. That's a name. Uh, like define like a name to yours, like even though we created numbered early on, but no, like we can edit them using like named ACLs and say no ten. So that's our sequence number ten, and then we can start with ten. For example, we put in the sequence number ten. Oh. Deny single host. So when we do show access this, we can see the sequence 10 has been changed. So every time you enter an ACL, that's going to create a sequence. So if we enter an ACL, next ACL here, it will be sequence 30. And after that, another ACL, sequence 40. And you can remove or add the sequence numbers or edit them. Verify an ACL, show an access list, standard APA, access this, pause. Standard IP access list 1, sequence 10, deny, sequence 20, permit. Standard IP access list no access, we have a sequence number 15, 10, and 20. Well, sequence 10 will be before 15. Verifying ACLs, show IP interface S000, we can see that we have an outgoing access list uh, 1, this is the verifying ACL on the interface and we have on one on the interface G00 as well. The standard ACL sequence numbers, another part of the IC 
iOS internal logic involves the internal sequencing of standard ACL statements. Range statements that deny three networks are configured first, followed by five host statements. The host statements are valid statements because they host IP address are not part of the previously entered range statements. So we have ra we have created range 10 network, uh, 20 network, 30 network, 192.168.10 network, 192.168.20 network, and 192.168.30 network. So we deny those three. And we're permitting some hosts. We are permitting 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.2, that should say host in front, yeah? Now, really what we're saying is these access lists, because they are more specific ACLs, really you should put them in the top you should configure them here and then less specific but the router will say okay fine because they don't conflict it's fine i'm going to accept this configuration but if it, if i do uh, if uh, on the list if you do a show acls a show running config now the router has fixed them for you put the more specific at the top and less specific at the end yep the host statements are listed first by the show command, but not necessarily in the order that they were entered. The iOS puts host statement in order using special hashing function. The resulting order optimizes the search for the host ACL entry. Configuring a standard ACL to secure a VTY port. So filtering a telnet or SSH traffic is typically considered an extended AP IP access control function because it filters a higher level protocol. However, because the access class command is used to filter incoming or outgoing telnet or SSH session by source address, a standard ACL can be used. So when you go to configure it on the VTY lines, so line VTY 0 to 4, you can do an access class, so not an access group, here is access class, and then standard access control list number, and then you can say in or out. Or VRF also that's for advanced configuration so here for example we say um, on the router one line VTY 0 to 4 login local so we're using local database for logins and transport input SSH so we line only SSH and access class 21 in so that says okay well only if you are permitted on access class 21 you will be in allowed Access class or just normal access hyphen list 21 says permit 192.168.10.0.000255. So we're permitting this network. This network it's allowed. This is denied. So access list 21 deny any. This is implicit deny anyway. So show access list. We can see the statement 10 says permit that network with that wildcard bits and deny anything else so this PC when it's trying to connect it will get the username and password when this PC is trying to connect it's going to be get connection refused thank you very much for watching this section 9.2 standard IPv4 access control list please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to sub subscribe this has been Astrid Krasnici and next video 9.3 extended IPv4 ACLs. Bye bye.